Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. You'll get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And when I'm not asking Bruce, hey, how big was Batista's? Well, you know. One of the things I like to do is help people save money. And if you're watching this video right now and you're in a 30 year loan, man, you're overpaying your single biggest bill and you may not even realize it. I want you to do a little experiment for me. Take your calculator out, multiply your monthly house payment by 360 payments. That's how many payments there are in a 30 year loan. That big scary number, that's your total of payments. You're looking at that number? You know you can do better. Keep more of your own money right now and go to savewithconrad.com. Or maybe you've got credit card debt. Man, it's not a matter of if I can save you money with that. Your average interest rate on a credit card is more than 20%. And by the way, all the interest you pay on those credit cards, it's not tax deductible. Whereas the mortgage interest, well, that is tax deductible. So if you owe this debt, it's up to you how to pay it back. Doesn't it make sense to get the cheapest rate possible and the greatest tax deduction possible? Find out how much money you can save right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com. You don't need perfect credit, even scores in the 500s can be approved, and it's no cost out of pocket. But maybe best of all, we're licensed in more than 40 states. We can help more families than ever before. But how much can we save you? Find out right now for free with a quick quote from SaveWithConrad.com. Good evening and welcome to another adfreeshows.com exclusive event. I'm Lauren Yaffe here with the host of my world. It is Double J, Jeff Jarrett, and we are happy to welcome some special guests tonight with some really cool things to talk about. And we hope we'll have time for some questions at the end. Jump those over into the chat box if you have them. Jeff, it's nice to see you tonight and for such an interesting and exciting occasion. How are you? I'm going to go ahead and get an early birthday plug in. My birthday's tomorrow. So Looking forward to seeing what Brian and Matt got me for my birthday tonight. I don't know. What what do you get a 75-year-old? Hey, see, we're already starting off good. <laughs> we're going to fill the whole hour here. Uh, but no, I think it's pretty cool, Lauren. I'm, I'm, I really am excited. I'm not the expert with action figures, but these guys have been gracious enough to join us tonight. So I, I really do appreciate it. Uh, Zombie uh, is the uh, – he's the – I guess he's the guru that nowadays. He's the one that uh, – uh, is instrumental in bringing this to life. So I'll shut up and quit rambling, but uh, I appreciate everybody jumping on tonight. And I really do want to appreciate Zombie and thank Zombie and, and Matt and Brian uh, for joining us. Oh, my Absolutely. pleasure. Thanks. Very cool. We're glad to have all of you. And happy birthday, Jeff Jarrett. Our friends at Ad Free Shows, I want you to keep an eye out for a special promotion we're going to be doing for Jeff's birthday. So, Ooh, baby. Yes, dropping that hint on you tonight. I want to welcome our friends from Major Wrestling Figure Podcast, Matt Cardona and Brian Myers. Matt, I will start with you. Thanks for joining us. Do you have any thoughts? Did you bring any birthday gifts? What's going on? Um, I, you know, I'm a big Double J Mark, but I forgot that it was his birthday tomorrow. But I think the gift that we got him is this figure, 30 yeah. years in the making. We 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 had to basically beg him to, to sign the dotted line, and I'm a lot I think of begging. He, I think he's glad that he did, and he will when that check comes. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Yeah. Well, good news. You know, I've heard similar stories from Conrad Thompson that he was on Jeff Jarrett for like months or years or, you know, whatever, trying to get him to do a podcast. And now they have like one of the best podcasts in the you know wrestling genre. So that's pretty exciting. Brian, you too have a great podcast in the wrestling genre here with Matt Cardona. Thanks for taking the time to join us on ad free shows. No problem. This is going to be fun. Anything for the founder, you know, me and oh, Jeff go you. way back to those global force days. So anything for the founder. I wore my founder shirt, uh, my TNA founder shirt for today's episode. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Not bad. Uh, Excellent. And with the coolest gimmick in the game, it is the time traveling zombie peddling vintage toys. What? I literally pulled that off Twitter. I was like, this has to be the coolest guy I've never met. It's zombie sailor. <laughs> Hello, zombie sailor. How are you? Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm not that cool, but it's my honor to be here. And Jeff, happy early birthday, my friend. Oh, no, I appreciate you joining us. And yeah, I can't, uh, as we go around the horn here and talk about the, the figure, I, I, I really want the, the ad-free family to hear your backstory and a little bit about your best friend and uh, just how many times uh, Matt uh, blew your phone up, text called and says, you better get Double J to sign. <laughs> Oof. Sign this cheap deal. Th this, this bargain basement uh curtain jerking uh contract you offered him he's not going to sign it so uh 
I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh my God. I'm ready for that story. Zombie, tell us this story. I need to hear this one. Jeff held Zombie up for 300 grand and went out the back door. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Now I'm actually living in a homeless shelter. My, 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 my condo is gone, but it's worth it because we're finally bringing the double J Jeff Jarrett orange card action figure to life. So it was worth every bit of agony. Oh, God. <laughs> you love to hear it. All right. I want to go back to Matt and Brian. Guys, fill us in on your podcast, what it is that you do and why we are here tonight. What makes this so exciting and special and literally decades in the making? I've done a little research on this. I've asked my friend Pondwater Dave about this. This is crazy stuff, right? Fill me in. Big time. Um, well, almost three years ago, my, uh, my good friend Matt Cardona here, somebody I met at wrestling school when we were both 17, 18 years old whatever it was uh and the thing that like bonded our, our friendship all these years and not just being a legit wrestling tag team was the love of uh professional wrestling action figures and collecting in general and much like we have really kind of bothered jeff and begged for him to sign this deal with zombie matt was just very instrumental in bugging me about dude i think we should do a wrestling figure pockets i think we should do and he would just constantly put it into my mind where i said you know what we're literally driving up and down these highways talking about this shit anyway. Let's just record it. You're right. You know what I mean? That that's literally was my mindset. Like, who knows what could come of it? I was very, very, very uh, short sighted and drastically wrong because it's it's taken over a life of its own. And anyone who's part of our, you know, our listening community and the podcast community in itself, it's just been one of the greatest blessings of my life, to be honest with you. It's just so much goddamn fun and so fulfilling and, uh, it was one of the best decisions ever made. So I'll, I'll be forever in debt for to Mr. Cardona here for pushing. Me. Well, well, thank you very much, Brian. So, yeah, like, like Brian said, you know, it was just my idea to have the, a podcast. I thought it would be 45 minutes a week. And the first episode is it's 45 minutes. And then it has spawned into live shows, our own action figure line, trading cards, YouTube channel, uh, VHS. It's like <laughs> anything that we could like, like like Twitch channel. I didn't right, even know what the hell a put Twitch was and brand yeah, on. We're yeah. doing and we're just trying to expand. Um, you know, and we met zombie. I met zombie years ago because he he's, he's literally a time traveler. He goes, I don't, I don't know exactly what he does, but he finds these case fresh action figures from the eighties, the nineties. And that's how we first met. And then when we first started getting merchandise for the major wrestling fair podcast, zombie was pitching to me like these little like enamel pins of like pins. Who's gonna, who's gonna want pins. And we put it on sale. I'll never forget. It like sold out instantly. I'm like, Whoa. We're onto something here because it's all about supply and demand. And in this like collectible community, this collectible market, the demand needs to be greater than the supply. And I think that's very, very important. And I think like limited edition is important. And I think, you know, we're not just in the wrestling figure business. We're in the nostalgia business, right? Like the nostalgia is in <laughs> whether you want to admit it or not, whether you think toys are cool or not. It's in. It's the in thing. And for this Jeff Jarrett figure, I know Jeff doesn't realize how important it was. But like for a kid who didn't get it and waited 30 years for it to come out, this is a huge deal. I feel strongly that saving money is important. You know, if it's not something we worry about now, boy, we are really going to worry about it later. And I want to help you get out of debt faster and do it with cheaper monthly payments. I'm talking to you if you're in a 30 year loan. Now is the time to take years off of your loan. We're routinely helping our listeners cut five, 10, even 15 years off their loan. And you can do this without perfect credit with no money out of pocket. You've just got to start at SaveWithConrad.com. That is so exciting. And Zombie Sailor, this figure in particular, as Matt was just saying, is special, not just to us and to Jeff, but to collectors everywhere. I want you to tell me about this particular figure. I'm trying to be respectful. I normally refer to them as wrestling Barbies. Oh my oh gosh. No. Oh. Why, would, why would you ever do that? Get, I don't know. You're gonna get That's what I collected as a kid, but we'll go for it. I'm going to yank you right out of here. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Tell me about the, the Jeff Jarrett Barbie zombie sailor. Okay. So, so the story with the Jeff Jarrett Barbie is, um, well, first of all, the WWF wrestling figures from the nineties, it was from a company called Hasbro right now. They are hugely popular. I mean, they've always been, but now it's just exploded. Like, like Matt was saying, nostalgia is so in and it's never going away. People love that stuff. So the very, very last few series, they were damn near impossible to find in stores. I remember personally, I could never find them in Toys R Us, KB. This is, you know, pre-internet days. So it was almost like, like, um, like, you know, rumors that these figures didn't even exist. Sure enough, they did. 
Um, the very last series, and they're all color coded, each of the cards that, you know, the, the display packaging, it would have been apparently called the orange card series. The card would have been orange. And there was, you know, Jeff Jarrett was in there and a couple of other guys. And this wasn't even known until a couple of years back. There was concrete evidence when the uh, blueprint drawing surfaced. And it just sent like the wrestling internet community in an uproar, like, oh my God, this is so great. And, you know, you just think of like, you know, wow, I wish I was, you know, 10 years old or nine years old and I had a double J figure to play with because, you know, he was perfect for that time. He was instrumental, you know, solid in the, in the WWF and it just never came to be. So now here we are, you know, 25, almost 30 years later, the year 2021, the figure that everyone should have had, I will now have a little, you know, have the opportunity to bring it to life. And, you know, it's a great honor and it's, it's a great feeling because I'm a collector first and foremost, before I'm like a businessman, which is probably not the smartest thing, but, you know, I want to bring this same joy that it's bringing me to everyone else that is like-minded. So it's, it's going to be great. We're going to base the figure on how it would have looked back in the day with a little facelift, facelift, if you will. We're going to use the same exact colors, the same like sort of style of packaging. It, it's going to be great. It, it's a dream come true. And I just hope it just brings a lot of people joy because it's certainly, you know, making my life a lot better. So. Well, that's very exciting and you love to hear it. I did actually look this up. The, the orange card series included Lex Luger. It had diesel. It had Mabel. I thought this was pretty cool. And do we know why this never came to pass? Why did this yeah. not happen? So what happened was really simple. Uh, Hasbro lost the license because uh, if you go back in the history books, wrestling wasn't that popular in, in the mid mid nineties. Right. So, so Hasbro lost the license and it was in a, a wrestling figure magazine. And like, that's all it was. It was just like this, Oh, this orange card is coming out with Jeff Jarrett, you know, men on a mission diesel, but that's all it was. And for just years, a list, no photo, evidence, yeah, no photos. Nothing. It was just like this rumor. And like, you know, you know how the wrestling business is with rumors, you know, then, then people start making these things called customs where they're making their own figures and painting them, but it was never the real deal uh, until like zombie said, the, the prototype heads popped up online and the, the drawings. Cause back in the day, like now we're used to computerized renders to make these figures. Like back in the day, someone had to hand draw how it would look and then someone would color it in and those showed up and, and they matched the heads perfectly. And, uh, it's just crazy that now that figure, like it was so close, you know, it got to the, the point where they drew it, they made the head. And now all these years later, thanks to zombie and thanks to Jeff for signing the deal. We're finally going to get it. I'm so excited to hear this, Jeff. I wish I could tell you that Barbie was modeled after me, but I'd be lying. So tell me about having this figure come to life. Finally, after all of these years, looking just like you guys, I've seen the drawn renderings. This is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, uh, wrestling is all about storylines and emotion. But just hearing this is the first time I've really heard all of this in depth with with Brian and Matt and then Zombie putting it together. And, and I do remember back in those days, whether it was uh, and Brian or uh, Matt hit me up. Was it a claim do, doing the video game type shoot? Yeah. Or claim. Or yeah. It, it was just sort of as a talent, just. OK, uh, you got to go in the photo room, take these photos, you know, stand a certain way, pose a certain way, because obviously it's not a publicity shot. But doing all that and then not really thinking anything about it a at all. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that this would have been my very first action. Figure, That's true. Right? Yes. Yeah. So so it was a figure that wasn't made, but almost made. And now just the art. I mean, hell, it's like. I don't know the artifact uh, uh, component of it that it really, yeah, they really did excavate all this stuff. It's drawings and the head and all this. And then zombie is in the market of doing this. And then these guys, their buddies, they're, they're, they're fellow wrestlers and, and all that, but they've launched a, a, a podcast and, and they, this is their niche and they own the niche. And so, just them chattering about it and talking about it and, and all kidding aside, Matt just saying, no, Jeff, seriously, th this, this is a figure. And, and I hope I don't tell on him, but you know, like Matt told me, I, like, I'm going to order two. And I'm thinking, this is just a bizarre world to me, you know, <laughs> that, that, uh. that, you know, it's going to go on sale and, and I'll let these guys talk about the on sale, but collectors and who knows, uh, I, I may, you know, buy a thousand myself and then uh, put them up on eBay and black market and try to double. <laughs>
kidding. But but just <laughs> just the component of the collectible market is 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 just crazy. And the world we live in, and you know, I've got five kids, and and you talk about nostalgia. The the music. I mean, they're my my youngest daughter is seventeen, and she talks about not doesn't call it nostalgia, but just even music. It, everything is somewhat retro and hot and got that vibe. So I'm pretty pumped. Uh, I, I really think j- just the story of this is what I really like. And, and, you know, at free guys, uh, you guys get to see this live and exclusive, but this is going to go up and, and we're going to talk about it and promote it. And um, again, I'm, I don't know all these specific details, but Comic-Con, Matt, why don't you uh, tell everyone how we're actually doing the on sale and all that good stuff that goes with it. Yeah, so we're going to – Zombie, you're putting them up for Comic-Con. It's, there's no real Comic-Con now because of the pandemic. They closed Comic-Con. So the, the thing is Comic-Con at home. Everyone's ordering this stuff online, which is great because instead of having to hopefully get into San Diego Comic-Con and, like, usually you have to camp out to get, like, a ticket to wait online to buy an exclusive figure, Zombie is just putting them up on his site. No limit. Right, Zombie? Yeah, there's going to be no limit. Okay, so check this out also. So the online San Diego Comic-Con – it's going to be, um, what is it, Friday, next Friday, July 23rd until yeah. like the 26th. Now, Jeff and, and people listening, for San Diego Comic-Con, it's notorious for getting exclusives. Like there's people tripping over themselves. But now, because it being online, there's going to be people with like 10 different browsers open, trying to get like so many different things at once. And listen, again, at the end of the day, this is a business and I don't want to compete with anyone else. So instead of putting it up on the actual same day as Comic-Con with everyone else, we're going to wait a couple of days. We're going to let the smoke clear a little. So it's going to go up for sale to the general public, zombiesailor.com on Wednesday, July 28th at 8 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be open worldwide. There's no limit. If you want to get a thousand, by all means, order a thousand. Help me get my house back. Whoa. Yeah. but it's going to be great, man. And everyone's going to have an opportunity. So no one can complain. Um, they'll be available to ship around December to February. And they're going to be beautiful. By the time they go on sale, we'll have full card art. We'll have the complete painted prototype. So you know exactly how it's going to look. And you're going to see the, the whole shebang, if you will. Yeah. And also, you know, we have the Major Recipe Podcast. And we have a, a Patreon of ourselves. Uh, we call ourselves the Major Marks. And, and Zombie and Jeff, they had this idea. Why don't we do something a little early? Let the major marks get them a little early. So on Monday, the 26th, if you're a major uh, Recipe for Podcast Patreon member, you can buy the Jeff and the perk of getting him early. Like, I know you're thinking, well, why get it early? I could just get it in a couple of days. There's no limit because we're going to have an exclusive Jeff Jarrett trading card and 100 of those will be autographed by Double J. So if you know anything about collectibles, the card market is in, the oh the, the, the toys on are fire. in. It, the, it's, it's unbelievable. I was never a card guy. Like, Brian has been talking about cards for the past year. I was like, oh, cards are stupid. Cards are stupid. Now, like, I have a card dealer in Orlando. I spent thousands <laughs> of dollars on cards. Cards are the real deal right now, man. Yeah, and that's a that's a major wrestling figure podcast jeff jarrett card so it's a it's a shot from uh when jeff did our live show in baltimore and like he said he's going to sign a hundred of them it's going to be super limited that's so cool it, it, it's crazy now so we've got uh people listening to this we got our ad free team but we're also gonna this is gonna be g- going public on, on youtube so uh just stress that one of you guys that you, you to sign up to to get your opportunity at this or to you know Make sure that we clearly explain. Yeah, so so the, the sale for everybody is going to be Wednesday, July 28th. That's zombiesailor.com. But if you want it early and you want the trading card and a chance to get a signed trading card, just sign up uh, and go to uh, major or the patreon.com slash major WF pod. And then on Monday, the 26th until the 28th, you'll have two days to order as many as you want, get as many cards as you want, really, for more chance to get the autograph card. That's cool. That is really cool. Very exciting. That sounds like something that would be exclusive, highly collectible. And these guys seem to be, uh, you know, kind of the authority in that kind of thing. I mean, in so- a perfect world, like let's say hypothetically, you sign up to the Patreon, right? The, the $4.99 tier and up. We're not, you can't just do the $1.99 tier. The $4.99 and up. <laughs> let's say hypothetically, you buy it early. You get one of those double J cards that's autographed. You sell it, flip it. You, you bought the double J. You know, you basically yeah, like basically, pay yeah, for the yeah. double J. It's an even, even trade. 
Sounds good to me. I want to go back. We talked a little bit about nostalgia. Jeff Jarrett, it has been uh, well known and highly publicized that you had no interest in telling your story on a podcast with Conrad Thompson or in any other uh, medium or method. And now here you are not only with a fantastic podcast, but we are about to get the previously unreleased lost to time as far as anybody knew orange card Jeff Jarrett what has changed in your life lately as you reflect back right before your birthday why are you embracing the nostalgia and everything that we have wanted to get out of you Jeff oh man a lot has changed uh just crazy man I I never would have thought of this and zombie I gotta ask you when's the first time you sent me the contract how far back does that go gosh I want to say uh February uh, January, February. And I remember yeah. I'm like, I'm going to let it sit on that because Conrad at the beginning of the new year, he asked, and I immediately thought on that contract, you know, if I decide to do the podcast, that's going to be a way to promote that, you know, the figure, cause it's so special. But yeah. Uh, when 2021 rolled around and, and the figure and the podcast and a couple other things I'm, I'm working on. Uh, yeah. Life, life has changed. Life is good. Summer of worry, no, no worries too, but it's a lot of fun. It, it really has. And you know, I did so many Zoom calls uh, in 2020 for, for business, and now here we are, uh, you know, doing this for ad free and 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 Brian and, and Matt and and all that. And Lauren, before we go to questions, I I, I want Zombie to tell the world who his best friend is. <laughs> oh, wait, Jeff, Jeff, you're not my best friend. What's going on here? Well, we, we're breaking up uh, because I, <laughs> until you pay me, but no. <laughs> Yeah, Jeff. I will say this. I earned so I'm in series one of of the zombie heels and faces. Yeah, okay, the, pre, the pre order for me is over. Zombie already paid me, Damn and right. it is more money than I ever got from a Jacks or Mattel figure. Let's just say that. You're you kidding? hear that double J? I'm, I'm dead serious, Jeff. Wow. Now Jeff, we're talking. Jeff is about to have a yeah. new best friend. Lord, that's that yeah. question again about how I life is great. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, it's cool. But that, that's, that is, you know, this entrepreneurship uh, that we're all experienced. Uh, it, you know, I, I've always been an entrepreneur, but this kind of stuff is, is really, really cool. Uh, I want to talk to you guys offline about a Funko deal uh, that got uh, thrown my way. And Whoa. Get on that. Look uh, at you. But, huh? I said, look at you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, zombie back to, uh, I, I'd, I'd love for the ad free team sort of to hear th- this connection because I think it's very unique. Tell us all about it, Zombie. I got to hear the story. How did this come to be? Okay, so uh, are you referring to my best friend, Mr. Kevin Costner? Yes. <laughs> oh, boy. I, I call him Kev. What do you call him? Well, I, well, I call him Big Kev. <laughs> 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 He's the real Big Kev, if you will. Uh, yeah, man. So, uh, so, of course, before I started manufacturing, you know, designing my own action figures, I was selling straight up just vintage figures, primarily through Instagram. And like Matt was saying, I just I used to find warehouses full of like original sealed cases, like unreleased pristine action figures. And then about two years ago, uh, the guy that I get a lot of my stuff from, he had cases upon cases of Waterworld figures from 1995. And you know, it's cool, you know, Waterworld, I remember seeing that in theaters and whatnot, but these figures were worth like nothing. You can get them brand new on eBay for like $6 shipped. So I'm like, God damn, I have like 500 carded Waterworld figures. How am I gonna get rid of these? So I'm always known for doing like over the top zany sales to like pop numbers and whatnot. But I'm like, you know what? Let me do something different. So I played the role of a crazed fan obsessed with Kevin Costner, who I genuinely love. But of course, now I love him that much even more. And I was like, you know, tagging him in post, you know, hyping up the sale. Never once in my wildest dreams that I think I would get his attention, nor was I vying for his attention. And just one day he just like liked my latest photo and he immediately started following me on Instagram. And it was him, blue check mark, all that stuff. Uh, long story short, we developed this relationship in the past year and a half where now like I'll text him, he'll text me, DM back and forth. And it's just like blowing my mind. So much so that three weeks ago when this first series for our, you know, the wrestling figures, heels and faces went up for pre-order, I just simply sent him a text. I'm like, hey Kev, can you give me like a really quick promo video to, you know, pipe up my figures? He sent me back like a 10 second video and that's all I needed. And it just, it, to this day, it rocks my world. Had this Man. little guy selling vintage toys is now friends with all these wrestling guys that I idolized as a kid. And now I'm like buddies with A-list superstar, America's <laughs> sweet Big Kev. It just rocks my world, man. Zombie sailor. 
Uh, listen, I'm at home, uh, but I understand you're launching your line tomorrow of your uh, wrestling toys. Good luck, man. So, kids, never give up. You never know what tomorrow brings. Hey, and I love it. And all kidding aside, Lauren, the reason I wanted him to share that story is it, it just goes to the sort of the heart and the passion that he has for figures and, and making things larger than life. And so, you know, when you get right down to it, uh, you know, nobody's going to retire off this money, but it's the passion and the fun and the enjoyment. And, I've, uh, you know, it's, it, I'm not a gamer and I'm not a action figure guy, but, but Matt and, and Brian's passion for figures has absolutely rubbed off on me. And when I did the live show and you see the people come through the line and how they, they take a lot of time through the meet and greets, it, it just, it, it blew me away and impressed me. So, uh, it, it's really, really cool to be a part of. So, uh, anyhow, Lauren, we're going to have some questions from our ad-free family. Oh, baby. Hi, I'm Nick. Nice to meet you, Jeff. Hey, Nick. Um, I got a question. I've been listening to Eric Bischoff for a long time, and I've heard his side about the, the lay down, and I understand why, but because I heard your, I just watched your video again. My question is, did you know that WCW was that messed up when the AOL Time Warner came into play? Or did you have any clue about that? I have I, said this, and uh, I know this is an action figure related question. I'm so, I'm so, yeah. That's all right. But I'll just give you a, 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 the, the real quick deal. And they, they were just on Twitter. The night I arrived at WCW in 96, it goes that far back. And, and I oh. sort of got to understand. Okay, here's the booking room, and here's corporates, and here's standards and practices, and here's talent relations, and here's marketing. It is, it was so different from the world that I just left at the WWF, and and knowing that it was a corporate entity. Now I had no idea it's going to get as crazy and as dysfunctional, but fundamentally, it was a completely different company. They just you you had to sort of be there and experience. But the buck stops with one guy at the at that time the WWF and the WCW walking in the door while I was there. And when I left to this date, there was never, I never had one singular boss. And, and in my opinion, that is a recipe for disaster uh, running an uh, entertainment company. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I do have a lot of cards of you. And when I was growing up, I had a lot of magazines and you always had you on the cover. And um, so I always collect, collect a lot of cards and magazines. And I just thought the figurine was neat and, so, but that's the question I had, sir. Appreciate it. <laughs> Appreciate you. Thank, you. Thank you so much, Nick. We're going to get to a few more questions. I want to make sure that we've gotten all the details, everything that we need to know about this particular release, the orange card. I also, I'm really curious just because I'm not knowledgeable about any of this, but it sounds exciting to me. Is this one going to have like the, uh, the card design or whatever? Is that going to be similar to what it would have been? you know, back in the nineties. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So we have, um, so back in the nineties, they had actually like, you know, real photos on the packaging. So we're not going to have real photos per se, but we have this beautiful artist who his work is like incredible and we're going to have him, you know, draw a double J. So we don't know for certain what photo would have been on the card, but I'm certainly going to put one up there. That's absolutely eye catching. That's going to look great on display in anyone's collection. So That's I, I had something to add, which I think is really, really cool. And what makes this figure extra special. So when, when zombie started heels and faces, he could have gotten anybody to design these figures, but he went to yes. the original Hasbro artist, the guy named Ron Rudat to draw these figures up the old school way, like not on a computer, the old school hand drawn way. And the best part about the Jeff Jarrett story is that he didn't have to redraw it because he drew it 30 years ago. Yes. So it's the same artist. So the same guy, who did everybody in series one of heels and faces like myself, uh, Brian, Sabu, Earl Hebner. Uh, he already drew the Jeff. So we didn't have to get it redrawn. It's, it's like the best part. We could just take that same drawing. But like Zombie said, now with like how figures are made, that fans are expecting, you know, like molded on straps. They don't just want it painted on like Jimmy Abel Nighthard's body like it would have been. So Zombie is making the drawing even better than what it would have been. And then we found the reference photos that Jeff took 30 years ago. So then we were able to take that and make the drawing even better than that. So I say we, like I have nothing, like I have no 
money in this, but like, you're, I'm you're so artistic. I, want, I had no I idea. I want the figure to be perfect. I want it to be as detailed as possible for me, selfishly. That's, oh, yeah, that's zombie. We were yeah. fighting over the headband last night on our show that we don't want a fabric headband in the back. Yeah, explain uh, that. I, I want to. Yeah, give- Je- Jeff, I didn't realize you wore a headband that that went that long down your back. Yeah, say so a lot of things you don't oh, man. know. But, I- <laughs> but no, so what is that? Uh, explain that. Is there going to be a headband zombie? And is it cloth or is it plastic? What or what's preferred, not preferred? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so the reference photos that we found, of course, you're wearing the headband on the front. That's going to be molded onto the figure. But the back of it where your hair is molded underneath that, we're suggesting that maybe we could put like, a, you know, two pieces of cloth to replicate, you know, like the back of like the knot from um, the headband and we could anchor it into the inside behind the hair. So when you have like when you have it in your hand, you're just going to see those two pieces of cloth hanging down behind the hair. So it'll be like as accurate as possible. That's crazy detailed. That is. That's the whole thing, man. I mean, we wanted to make this, you know, as as perfect as possible. Like, again, we want to, you know, pay tribute to the stuff from the 90s, but at the same time have like a modern take in it. You know, like, by the way, I left this out. The sculptor that we have doing this, he is absolutely incredible. Alex Hink. I, I can't even pronounce his last name. H-E-I-N-K. He's a great guy. Great guy. And, you know, he does award-winning sculpts. Like, this guy has sculpted Sigourney Weaver, you know, Ripley from Aliens. Um, like, so many guys. Like, Pan's Labyrinth um, for, for NECA. Like, these amazing figures. And now he's doing all these Heels and Faces figures. More importantly, Jeff Jarrett. And I'm telling you, the amount of photo reference this gentleman is using to recreate these figures is... You cannot replicate this sort of artistic vision that he has like a lot of days a lot of times nowadays all these guys are you know making these figures 3d on a computer and there's nothing wrong with that they're highly detailed this guy is doing it the old-fashioned way he is hand sculpting these in wax so like you see those little imperfections that's their you know that's from this guy's fingers you know on a computer it looks almost too perfect these are going to be perfect but there's beauty and imperfection if that makes any sense Wow. Artiste. Absolutely. It's going to be an amazing figure. This is wonderful. Jeff, you were right. A zombie's excitement about this has me feeling excited too. I'm definitely going to buy the Jeff Jarrett Barbie. So uh, that's great. <laughs> Gentlemen, I want to know, remind me again, the best, easiest way to get my hands on this figure. And then we're going to open the floor to some questions. Yes. Yeah, so uh, the best way would be July 28th, 8 o'clock PM Eastern zombiesailor.com. Again, the site will be wide open. You don't need any sort of password, no sort of San Diego Comic-Con badge or tickets. Just go to zombiesailor.com, July 28th, Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern, and it'll be wide open. There's absolutely no cap. So again, it's an unlimited amount. You could order as many or as little as you want. It's a pre-order. So of course, payment is due in full, but it'll be in hand, ready to ship out between December and February. And of course, we're going to do our job to get it to you as quickly as possible without having to sacrifice any sort of quality control issues. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing. And of course, if you want to jump in a little early and uh, take the gamble on the Jeff Jarrett autographed card, then you're going to want to check out the guys with the podcast. Tell me more about that. Yeah, One time again. It just goes, you'll still have to go to Zombie Sailor to order it, but you'll get a special password by signing up to the Patreon, patreon.com slash major WF pod. So that's going to be that Monday. I mean, we could start that at midnight. So it's the whole Monday, the whole Tuesday, and then we'll stop it uh, a Wednesday, a little before Zombies goes on sale. So we could take, you know, the list of those names who ordered. And then those cards are going to go out right away. So we're, you know, you know, you'll, we're going to have to wait for the figures. But the, the the process of making cards is a lot different than making uh, mass producing figures. So the cards faster, will probably go yeah. out in a couple of weeks, a month tops. We'll just need Double J to sign 100 and send them back. <laughs> Here you go. I'm ready for it. You got my address already. Yeah. All right, he's ready for it. So now I want to invite some of our friends to ask their questions. Remember, jump over in the chat. Let me know if you want to get in on this conversation. I want to start with great friend of the show and a really cool collector buddy of mine, Pondwater Dave, with the extensive collection of wrestling Barbies. How are you, Dave? Hey, how y'all doing tonight? Thanks, Lauren. Hi, Jeff, Matt, hey. Brian, hey, bud. Tommy. Hey, man. Dave. Hey, man. How's it going? I got a... I didn't come to start figure collecting for uh, until about three or four years ago. And y'all say orange card. And I get that that's the card that has the picture, but 
what other colors were there? I've noticed these um, figures go for a lot of money. Are there some colors that are worth more than others? Yeah, the, sure, the one yeah. that's worth the most is the green card. That That's the final set. And like Zombie said, even the last couple sets, you couldn't just walk into a Toys R Us. So I know it really depended on where you lived. I know for me in the Northeast where WWF was the hottest, I still had to go to flea markets and comic book stores. I couldn't just walk into a Toys R Us and get these things. Um there's a, there's a funny story for Christmas 95. All I wanted was that green card one, two, three kid. Uh, but at the comic book store that I lived at or lived near, it was 45 bucks. And in 1995, 45 bucks for like a kid was a lot of money for my parents. It was like a, a lot of money as well. But I thought for sure I was going to get that for Christmas. And I thought Christmas morning that it was there and I saved the best for last. I, I saw something shaped like an action figure. And when I opened it up, it was a WCW Jimmy Hart figure, and I was so pissed. <laughs> My Christmas was ruined. I like nothing against Jimmy Hart, but I wanted the one, two, three kid, and I didn't get it till years later when I had enough money to to use eBay. Uh, and yeah, to add to that, all these behind me are the Hasbro's. And about 60, 70 percent of the line is on this like baby blue kind of carding. Uh, there's yellow carding. There's a red card set. There's a green card set and a purple card set. Jeff was going to be last in the orange card and it was just a myth until we've uncovered all this years later you know with the internet and dire collectors and things like that so the, really the last set and the most valuable set of the Hasbro's are the green card cards and, and also it's rumored that that orange card set was supposed to be a uk exclusive so it was even if it did come out it was going to be crazy rare yeah wow well, well thank y'all for answering my question i really appreciate it thanks, thanks man for Thanks for joining us, Dave. And a little behind the scenes, Dave had to fill me in a little bit on the situation here. I had to do my homework to prepare for this one. So that's cool, too. Another friend of the show, it's a wrestling historian. How are you, Larry? I'm good. How are you guys doing? What's up? Suicide. Suicide. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Suicide. So, uh, Suicide. I, I squashed your ass at Impact, bro. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not going to. I'm not going to whine and complain about losing. I'm just going to man up and own it. Um, but my question, all, actually all four of you guys, uh, what was your favorite Jeff Jarrett action figure? Ooh. I I'm uh, anticipating this zombie sailor one being my new favorite. Uh, my current favorite, though, that's a tough call, but I think I'm going to go with Jeff's actual first uh, figure, which was his bone-crunching action one, because it's his only one in that that gear with the neck gimmick i don't even know what you would call that thing the jeff wore um but it's the only one that has that depiction the rest are all biker shorts jeff Jarrett. so to me that one really stands out and yeah, he had I the glasses agree. and the hat right he has a lot more toyetic and it's got the the special hands with the, yeah the two doing a strut toys. hands yeah you really can't beat it that's very toyetic as they say in the business yeah yeah, definitely. I'm going to say mine is, um, believe it or not, I have a tie. I want to go with the first ever uh, WCW Toy Biz figure. I forgot the name of the series. The one that came with the tattoos. TNT, T-shirts and tattoos. Yes, <laughs> yes. That one. And then uh, series one, also Toy Biz, the uh, TNA figures. I thought that was a great figure. Wow. I'm, look I'm looking at all of them around. around my yeah, mind. Jeff, do you have like at least one of everything you think? See, I, that's why I was wondering if you guys were the one with the fingers. I'm looking at that over there, and it's actually in a shadow box with the Owen that I that I got made. And that was the only thing up in my house for years and years and years. That that one. Do you the, know they they, they re-released that figure on like different card backs? So you need them all, Jeff. That, that just blows me away. So. so like it's on it's like Superstar Series Six, Best of '98, and then I think is it a special edition too, or is that it? No, that's it. That's the special it. edition would have the accessories, and they wouldn't have done that, right? Let my family save your family some cash. You don't need perfect credit. You don't need money out of your pocket, but we will save you money. It's not a matter if, it's a matter of how much. Save with Conrad.com. Uh, there's a special edition with the, uh, with the, one of the, like the don't tick me off, like style ones. And yes, we get yes, a t-shirt sure. at boxofgimmicks.com. Don't tick me off. Get a cheap plug in there. Don't but tick yeah. me off. <laughs> crazy. Oh man. That's uh, that's pretty cool though. There's probably, I guarantee there's action figures to yourself that you don't own. For sure. There, there's no doubt. I was just looking around. The, the Legends one with the NWA logo on it that we made. Yeah, the TNA Legends one in the red trunks. Yeah. Yeah. Short tights for when I, because that's the only one that, in the, the shortcut tights like when I started back 86. Yeah. 
Uh, and I, I made more money uh, off of that. I was owners. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very cool. Thanks a lot, guys. Man, thanks, thanks, man. thanks, man. Thank you very much to all of our friends joining us tonight. A wrestling historian is the one who brings us our daily wrestling with history. So very good to see you tonight, Larry. Mark Nelson, did you have a question for the guys? I do. How are you guys? What's up, hey. Mark? And I just want to say, first of all, I want to say thank you very much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Um, quick question for, before I even get to my question. How much are the figures and how many are you making? Yeah. So the figures are going to be $39.95 each. And as far as how many we make, it all depends on how many are ordered. So essentially, if only, you know, a thousand figures get ordered, that's how many we're going to make. If 10,000 get ordered, you know, the same thing. So there's no cap. So it all, it's pretty much a made to order type of uh, assembly line we have going on. So Overall, I, I think it's going to be pretty limited, all things considered. And also, this is very important. They're only going to be available for pre-order. So if anyone misses out like next week or the week after when, when they go on sale July 28th, we're not going to offer these again. That's going to be it for the Orange Card series. So it's going to be like you have to get them now. If you snooze, you lose. So it's, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's you got to pre-order it. Yeah, yeah a lot I, of I, a lot of modern toy companies have taken on this business model. And Broski and I like to preach that the pre-order is really the order. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. You're not, you're, yeah. It just click. There's no such thing as pre-order. You're just buying it and it's on layaway. You have to pay yep. it now. Right. It's yes. Hurt. Yeah. Because there's not going to be another opportunity to do so at street value. Right. You know, and so I think people sometimes they hear pre-order like, oh, I'll just wait till it's in stock. No, 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 no. This is the order. It doesn't yeah. come in. It comes in stock and you didn't get it. You missed it. Then you have to go on eBay and pay double. Yeah, exactly. That's just, that's just how it is. Or you, you got to buy a sign from Jeff on eBay. There yeah. you go. When it, when, yeah. when it comes when it comes in stock, essentially everyone is accounted for, and they're but going out. Hypothetically, as uh, I'll play the role of Conrad Thompson tonight. Hypothetically, if you bought five, uh, you, you could get me to sign four of them, uh, and we'll put it up, and and you'll make money. So it's an investment. Is uh, that accurate, guys? There you go. In theory, yeah. in sorta. Of. I I, th I think all these early heels and faces. And I, I'm not trying to you know suck up the zombie, but I think all, especially the Jeff. They're all going to go up because people right now, I think they're a little hesitant because there's no product in hand. But by like five or six, when those those sets are out and like, oh, damn, I want to go back. Well, you can't. You're going to have to go on eBay. And like there's going to be way less of those made than like series five and six. That's just how like stuff like this goes. Go to like a company like Super 7. They do the same business model. They give you a month to, to essentially order the figure. People, you know, they dilly dally don't do it. Then it actually comes out. They're like, oh, damn. What I can't go to super7.com again. I have to go on eBay. And that's just that's the toy business these days. I, I personally think it's better. So you don't have a figure just like we like to say warm in the pegs at Walmart, you know, just sitting there forever, you oh, know. In the pegs. I love it. I warmer. love it. That's cool. warmer. And then my question for you for my question for all of you is what's the most your most prized uh figure or the most expensive figure that you've purchased so far? Ooh. Um, so I, I'm a big historian when it comes to wrestling figures and, uh, I have a lot of pre-production items and similar to Jeff, there was a figure that never came out by Hasbro. It was a Greg, the hammer Valentine in his rhythm and blues Ooh. outfit. And, uh, that was shown inside a Toys R Us ad, like, uh, in, inside a WF magazine, like you open up the magazine and it's like all the new tag teams coming to Toys R Us. Long story short, every tag team picture came out except for that. Uh, rhythm and blues, Greg Valentine, and I was able to get my hands on that hand painted prototype. So that's my prize possession. I'm not even like necessarily a fan of Greg the Hammer Valentine. It's just that for so long, I thought I, I was missing this figure. This is pre internet. You know, now you go, oh, it just didn't come out. But for five years, I thought I just couldn't find it. So like it has like this, this like sentimental attachment, even though I'm not necessarily a fan of Greg the Hammer Valentine. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So about a year and a half ago, I had the opportunity to buy a Owen Hart Hasbro autographed. And, uh, obviously wow. I didn't, I jumped on that because it was like, I thought, you know, maybe like a once in a lifetime sort of opportunity, but it sparked this collection, uh, and this passion in me where I said, you know what, I'm going to get all, all this, you know, all these Hasbros and try to get them autographed. So, um, it's been like very expensive, but I also feel like everything I get it means a lot to me because this is literally like my childhood possessions in like their most ultimate form 
Uh, and, you know, they're all appreciating in value. So I feel good about it. But there's some that are just like been unbelievable. You know, I just got behind me here this LOD two pack signed by Hawk and Animal. Uh, I have oh, a Roddy Piper. Wow. I have, you know, um, just some irreplaceable ones. I have an earthquake one that I got from a, a fan in Japan that actually used to be a sponsor and would take them out. So, like, I, I know about the, you know, legitimacy of it. So it's really uh, been incredible. And, you know, it's just, it's like the thrill of the hunt too that's really exciting for me about collecting them because, uh, you know, some of these guys, like I think like Andre, the figure came out in 1990 and he passed in 93. So there's only about a three year window for someone to get that figure autograph. So I don't, how many could even exist in the world? I don't know. Uh, same with like another one that I always think of that I would love to have is the Kerry Von Erich. But Kerry Von Erich, uh, this figure came out in 91 and he passed in 93. So it's even shorter window. So there's things like that. And I think it's something I'll be collecting probably the rest of my life, you know, um, and it means that much to me. Oh, like, that's awesome. Back, back to what we were talking about, about the significance of this Jeff figure. You know, these Hasbros were the gateway to so many people my age. It's it's the gateway to their love of pro wrestling. And I know that's true for me. It's true for Matt. You know, these are the first thing that like really captivated you as a child. And it, it, it led you to this crazy world of pro wrestling, whether you're just a lifelong fan or you were as nuts as I was to get involved in it, actually. So. Wow. They mean a lot. I know it's crazy. It sounds like that. These little uh, three and a half inch, you know, pieces of plastic, but they really do truly like mean a lot. How's That's that, nice. Mark Nelson? That was great. And then Jeff, yes, do the Funko Pop. Thanks, guys. All right. <laughs> Thanks, <bud. laughs> Zombie, I want to go back to you for a minute, if you don't mind. We're talking yeah. a lot about this heels and faces. Is this a series? Is this a lineup? Fill me in. Tell me about this. Well, I had a quick zombie. I had this question anyway. Is Jeff just a standalone exclusive? He's not series two. That's what I'm getting at. Come on. Oh, of course. So, so, Mr. Jeff Jarrett, you are so popular and so wow. important. This figure, this figure means so much to everyone that this is its own standalone release, man. Awesome. So you're not part of series one. You're not part of series two. This is the Jeff Jarrett orange card figure. It holds so much merit. It's its own thing. Wow. How about That's that? That's how it should be. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, let's let's face it, right? If if I wasn't doing this, like, I don't see any other company making an orange card figure tribute like this. So it's it's really that important. I'm not blowing smoke. So it, you know, it had to be done on its own. Um it was either it was going to get done with this heels and faces brand or it would never get done period. So it's, again, it's an honor just to have this in our lineup. So of course it's going to be by itself. I mean, it, it, it can't hold nothing else could hold a candle up to it. So yeah. Orange card, Jeff Jarrett, you're, you're right. Your own I'm, man. I'm going to jump in here with the question just because I've, after hearing all this, so I'll, I'll use a uh, cool wicked toys or Mattel uh, yeah. or, or the other guys out there. They actually couldn't really do this, could they? Could they? I don't think so. Or, or maybe they could. They, but they, they wouldn't do this. What? I don't know how to frame. Yeah, it. it doesn't doesn't like necessarily work like that anymore. Yeah, that's, they, that's, that's where I was going with it. Yeah. Yeah, they wouldn't do it, and they also wouldn't do it as good as me. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> That's what we like to hear. So you guys are getting the very best of the best, ultra rare. Uh, B. Fuller in the comments says the one and a half series, standalone Jeff Jarrett. That's pretty cool. Michael has a question for you. Hello, Michael. Good evening, everyone. And thank you for taking the time to take my question. Hey. My question, I'll start with Jeff, and then it'll kind of go over to the other three individuals on the call. But I want to focus on the TNA series of action figures. And I was wondering if Jeff could talk about whether he had any involvement in the development of the TNA action figures when he was with the company. And then for Matt, Brian, and Zombie, do you guys own any TNA action figures? And if so, are there any in, of the TNA action figures that stand out to you? I'll uh, jump right in. Thanks for your question. Uh, yes, I was uh, very much involved. Jeremy Padar, how did I say that last Bedauer. night? Yeah. Yes. Bedauer, yes. Uh, him and his team came to the house. We actually... Uh, we used to so, do creative here at my house with Vince and Dutch and whoever the, the whole crew would be at the house. And we had to, uh, we schedule it and we like, we, we usually get done at, I don't know, seven, eight, nine o'clock at night. And this particular day we said, all right, guys, we got to wrap like at four o'clock and Jeremy and his team came out to the house. We came downstairs and that's when we started brainstorming and having the different ideas uh, about all kinds of things. So um, we had a big collaborative uh, creative session with the with the with with the with the creative team and, and Jeremy's team, so yes, that's the short answer. 
And Jeff, that's with the Jax line. There was also uh, the Marvel Toys line that came before it. It's first. It a different company. That first. And that was, uh, yes. when, yeah, that was, you guys maybe helped me. I felt like, I mean, it took a while to do the contract, but once we so like did it, it was, they were out. I felt like that was a, a done deal. What's, what's I, I love I love the the Marvel Toys TNA one. line. Yep. Yeah, I think I think it stands the test of time. They're pretty fun. They're fun to collect. Um, I like them a lot better than the Jax ones. Oh, hey, yeah. actually, actually, double. I'll throw this one back at you. I was recently told a story by one Brian Wittenstein that when you guys were unveiling the Jax line, uh, there was some kind of packaging defect where they all fell off the carding. There was so if you look, there's uh, and I I think I've had we had this conversation. There was a series of jacks that I had brown hair, not blonde hair. Yes, that, that they made a what they call a running change and fixed that and gave you the more vibrant blonde yeah, hair. That, that and then there was something with uh, a cards falling off. Yeah, there was the packaging. We had a, 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 I don't know if it's defects is the right word, but yes. Yeah, I think it was packaging. like defective batch, and then like, but you guys were unveiling them. Like at like a, like a weekend, like a fan fest or something, and then Brian's version of the story is that him and Bob Ryder stayed up all night gluing them back together, the bubble back to the the cardboard. There, so there guys, was there was so a, guys could hold up and show them. There, there was a big patch, packaging snafu. That was, <laughs> snafu. Uh, Let's just call it a snafu and move on. But no, there was some. But I, 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 you can imagine Don West, guys. It's going to make it more valuable. Forget yeah. it. Don't worry. But, but trust me, guys. It's okay. But uh, I, I think the powers that be were very upset that uh, things were f f literally falling apart at the seams. <laughs> um, Jeff, when my hair is brown, my whole life tends to fall apart as well. So <laughs> <laughs> I can relate. That is definitely a defect. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right, guys, I need to know where we can find you on social media, on the Internet. How can we support you aside, of course, from this fantastic figure? And we'll be getting all that information out to our patrons as well. So we'll get that link to all of you guys. But let us know now where to find you, how to support you. Before we go, I want to hear uh, uh, Matt's answer to that question about the, the figures. Oh. Uh, well, here, here I'm. Uh, this is like my addiction is uh, the wrestling figures, right? And there's like, for instance, I had all those those Marvel toys, TNA figures. But at one point, I, I sold a lot of my collection, including all of those uh, TNA figures. But I have since got back that Jeff. And I, I count that Jeff, like, since you are the founder of TNA. So I count that as like having a representation of the whole line. Because like with collecting, you have to set your own rules. Because like there is no, if you were to try to get every single wrestling figure ever made, it'd be a, it'd be impossible. B, you'd go broke. C, you'd run out of room. So you have to make your rules. And what's so fascinating about collecting is that Brian and I'm sure Zombie can back me up. Your rules change. You change your rules. You make course, exceptions. <laughs> you know. So uh, who knows? Like I know, I know Brian sold the TNA figures around the same time I did, but recently rebought them all. Yeah, I have at least one of every character. I don't have a, I don't have every single figure, but I have one of every character. Wow. Yeah, for sure. That's cool. I, I needed that Bobby Roode with the Canadian flag hanging off a hockey stick, man. <laughs> That's well, cool. I mean, think about it like this, Jeff. The Hasbro figures, the ones that were, you know, that you didn't get and Brian has on the wall. That was from like 90 to 95, right? So five years. There's less than 100 figures, 100 actual different figures made, as opposed to now with Mattel. There's a hundred figures in a year. You know oh, what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So like those, those hundred figures or whatever it is, 92, whatever it is, like everyone has that sentimental attachment and like they need to get them all because it's not that it's easy to get them, but at least it's attainable. Yeah. I suppose you can't, there'd be no way to get every Mattel WWE figure ever. No way. Yeah. Be you know, like in that line of, 90 to 95 Hasbro, Hulk Hogan, arguably the, the biggest wrestling star ever. I think there's five different Hogans. There's probably, yeah. they probably make five Roman Reigns in six months. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Contact Easily. King. That's cool. Yeah. Yes, that is definitely cool. I need to know was it Brian who said you sold all of them and then bought them back? What did your wife say about this? Because you already told us that they appreciate Well, no, we both, Matt and I both did this. So this is long before fiancés and wives. This was, okay. J Jax, Jax had the WWF slash WWE license from 96 
to 2010. So that's a long time for a toy company. So we were so emotionally invested in collecting these for a big portion of our life, basically half our life. And then they switched and they ex they lost it and it's going to go to Mattel. And we're like, well, I can't start this all over again. So Matt and I completely abandoned ship, sold you know a ton of stuff, about 90% of it down to the bare bones, except the vintage stuff that like, you know, when we were kids, uh, little, little kids. And then as Mattel, you know, Mattel, Tells a powerhouse toy company and they started coming out and we're like, well, these are pretty kick-ass wrestling figures too. So we just dove right back in eventually and, you know, gobbled it all back up. Wow. Yeah. Good story. Interesting. Yeah. Pretty cool stuff. Unless you have anything else to add, I think that's going to do it for tonight. So feel free to jump in and share your social handles and your Patreon and all that good stuff. Tell us how to support your efforts. Yeah, just 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 download the podcast, Major Wrestling for a Podcast, every Friday, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Major WF Pod and on YouTube, youtube.com slash Major Pod Network. We have a lot of cool stuff up there. Um, and we we have the history of the Hasbro figures where we went through every single figure. Uh, we have them in the package, out of the package, all the rings, all the accessories. And then we also have the history of the LJN figures which is the, the figures that came out in the eighties. And we, we filmed that at the Conradison and Conrad is the co-host. So check that out as well. I love it. Cool. Zombie. Yes, sir. So uh, I'm primarily on Instagram. It's at zombie sailors toys website is zombie sailor.com. Um, this week I have a huge announcement. Of course, Jeff Jarrett, you're pretty damn big, but either tomorrow or the day after a huge signing, this will be this wrestling, uh, person's first ever figure he's a big star from the late 80s early 90s so uh check me out on instagram it's going to be a big big earth shattering event once i announce him so check it out there you go love the plug and guys i just got i just got off the horn half price apps hendersonville applebee's tomorrow for jeff's birthday (laughs) don't miss it okay applebee's half price apps hendersonville tennessee applebee's be there be square all right I'll ask Big Kev if he wants to come. <laughs> oh, not not Oshkosh. He can't make that down. Oh man, <laughs> absolutely do not miss it. Also, don't miss our Jeff Jarrett promotion going on tomorrow on AdFreeShows.com. You will want to be sure to stick around and check that out. Jeff, tell us where to find you on the internet. Oh, these folks know, but I, I'm at Real Jeff Jarrett, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Real Jeff Jarrett, and of course, my world with Jeff Jarrett anywhere. Uh, you can download your podcast. Drops every Tuesday. That's right. And especially on adfreeshows.com. Remember to support these guys. Keep your eye out for Jeff's figure. Pre-orders start on July 28th or 26th. As you've heard, I'll be keeping an eye out for all of you at our next Ad Free Shows exclusive experience. Enjoy your evening. And thank you all for coming out tonight. Goodbye. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a third year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.